Hello guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. As you can probably tell by the title, today's video is going to be the February edition of New Makeup Releases, Favorites and Fails. If you're new to this series, it's basically my monthly thing where I just go through all the new releases I tried in the month and share my in-depth reviews on each one. Today I have a bit less than I normally have just because it was a shorter month, obviously, and then I did do the January video a little bit late. And by late, I mean like into the middle of February, so... <laughs> queen of consistency here but a combination of the fact that this was a bit of a shorter month for me and then i mean it was a shorter month for everyone actually i'm so smart and also i didn't really try as many things this month i just kind of tried to focus on the things i already had in my collection that being said i do have about 10 new releases to share with you guys today and i'm super excited to just share my thoughts because a lot of them were really good and a lot of them were Meh. Before we jump into it, I've gotten questions about what I'm wearing on my nails. I've had this set of acrylics on for about two weeks now, and this has been my nail color in the past, I want to say, two videos. So the polish I'm wearing is from Madame Glam. It is the Soak Off Gel Polish in the shade Chit Chat. It's a really unique shade, and I'm super sad about Kale Polish going out of business, but Kale Polish had some of the best shades. So I've been looking for really cool, preferably vegan, um, nail polish brands just to try and see if I can find any more unique shades to add to my collection, and this has been one of my favorite brands. So. These will probably be the set I have on for most of March. And is that it? I think I've rambled enough. So yeah, without further ado, let's- Let's just jump into it. All right, first things first, I wanna start with probably the biggest release I tried this month. And this was one that everyone was saying, Don't do it, Julia, don't buy it. But it's Hourglass, so. This is the Vanish Seamless Liquid Foundation. And honestly, Hourglass is kind of that brand that just makes me throw all reason out the window. Just judging on the fact that I'm really not the hugest fan of the Vanish Seamless Cream Foundation, the stick one, because it seems to be, first of all, very, very full coverage, but a lot of the people who are hating it have drier skin. I actually really do enjoy this. A lot of the reviews I've watched, and I have watched a few reviews of this one, most of the people who didn't like it used like a pump or more of foundation. And I normally use about a pump to a pump and a half of foundation. So this one, it says to use half a pump. And the first time I wore this one, I think I used about a pump and it looked so nasty on my skin. Even though I'm a single Pringle, I still wanna look good on Valentine's Day. So this really did me dirty and I was kind of scarred, but then I decided to try it again using a lot less product. I do have to use this one with a hydrating primer. So normally I just do a nice moisturizer. I usually use Tatcha water cream and then I go in with some silk canvas on my forehead and anywhere else I need some primer. I feel like this is one of the most full coverage foundations as well, but it doesn't get like super heavy because I don't have to use a ton to get to that nice amount of coverage. So I actually really like this and I don't have have, like fully dry skin I would say I have normal skin with some dry patches and kind of I, I guess it's a combination but, but normally I can get most foundations to work out for me depending on what kind of skin prep I do and this I'm very very happy to say I do actually like this one even though it is pretty much everything I don't love which is full coverage very matte and pretty drying I actually really like this and the fact that I'm using half a pump for $56 makes it slightly more worth it why the fuck you lying Something I was super excited to receive in the mail this month were from Lottie London. They are actually launching in Target, I believe. So they sent over a few of their newest releases. And the thing I was most excited about were the Arch Rival brow pencils. It seems like a lot of brands are doing some like cool brow releases. So I think Urban Decay just did like a full eyebrow line. Anastasia is coming out with a dip brow gel, which yes, I am buying. I think I'm gonna buy that and the Riviera palette and also maybe one of the new highlighters. But And is there any way I could also buy the brand Anastasia Bear the Hills? These I was really excited for because these are supposed to be like microblade effect brow pencils. So I have three shades. It has this really interesting little tip. That's what she said. Where it's kind of indented in four different places. So it can create these like hair strokes. So I tested this one out when I first got it and I like swatched on my hand and it seemed like it would be the most beautiful like fluffy brow feathery effect, which I've been loving for like my no makeup makeup days. I like this idea in theory. However, in practice, it just really wasn't doing it for me because I feel like you have to press down on these really, really hard to get that nice color payoff. So when I was doing it on my hand, it looked really nice. But then when I tried to put it in my brows, for some reason, the color just wasn't coming off and you couldn't see the hair strokes I was doing. So if I wanted to get like actual color payoff in my brows, I would have to press down pretty hard. And then if I did that, I was kind of ruining the whole like feathery, fluffy, light brow effect and I didn't really like that. So unfortunately, even though I tried to use the darkest one to see if that would help the problem, I just 
have a harder time using these ones than I would normally have with a regular brow pencil. I think I might need to try the same kind of like pencil, but maybe in a different formula because I felt like it just wasn't coming through. So I was really excited about these ones and I was thinking these were gonna be like a new favorite brow pencil, but However, they did also send out two of their new Blush Crush blushes, and I think I found some of my two new favorite powder blushes. I've kind of been into this like bouncy powder texture lately, so these, when I first opened these up, these blush crushes kind of look similar to my favorite Kaja Mochi Glow highlighter. Kind of similar packaging, it's that little domed, slightly like spherical little product. And it's a powder blush, but it has this kind of bouncy, like almost like light and airy texture. So I felt like when I applied this one, it blended so seamlessly into the skin and it didn't like look like I was wearing a powder blush. It looked like cream, but it blended like powder. I have the shade Zac, as in Zac Efron and Drake. So Drake. <laughs> Zac is probably like my favorite like berry tone blush. It's what I'm wearing on my cheeks right now. Love the texture of these ones. They're also really, really affordable. Lottie is a really good drugstore brand. And blush is just one of those products where I feel like you can just get the best ones at the drugstore. Like foundation and eyeshadow in particular, I feel like I just prefer from higher end brands, but blush and mascara, I feel like the best ones are the drugstore, like Loki. Yes. Yes. I really did not try out a lot in the way of eyeshadow this month, mostly because I did my eyeshadow palette declutter. And I don't know, after that, I felt like I just, first of all, really wanted to reconnect with a lot of the stuff that I'd been neglecting in my collection. So looking at everything in my collection, clearing out what I didn't want, and then just having all the stuff that I was left over. It was really nice because it kind of just allowed me to just rediscover things I'd kind of forgotten about. I only tried out two palettes this month, but the first one, Oh, baby. <laughs> I've been wanting to get my hands on a melt palette for a really long time, particularly the Gemini or the Smoke Sessions one. I didn't really care for the 27 palette that much. I've just been really, really wanting to try out melt shadows and they are very pricey. But I talked about this one recently in a video and the Gemini palette is one of the most beautiful palettes I've ever seen in my life. Color scheme, when I first saw this one on Instagram when it first released, I was kind of like, Really? It was this kind of phase I had last year where I was just so over neutral palettes and I was like, you couldn't have just done a fully green palette, but now I really, really appreciate the kind of browns in here, especially because that's what I do on a daily basis. But the browns in here, I feel like if you love pukey browns like I do, um, yeah, this is for you. So this palette's currently out of stock, so I don't necessarily want to review the palette more so. I kind of want to just talk about the Melt formula. I think it's one of the best I've tried in a long time. The mattes in here are insanely pigmented but for some reason i could pack on as much of this green as i want to and it still blends out really well so that's something i find is really hard to create with a lot of colorful shadows with greens and blues in particular it's hard to be able to like pack on a lot of pigment and then be able to blend it out in a nice way and these just really do that also the shimmers are bomb it's one of the few formulas i don't feel like i have to use with a wet eye brush or with my finger to just get full pigmentation and i am a gemini this is my sign so i'm very very happy with this right now whenever melt comes out with the next palette um, I will be on the website immediately. Along with the Hourglass Foundation, I also did try out another foundation from a very high-end brand, but it's kind of the opposite effect of the Hourglass one. This is the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Um, so this was kind of meant to be the um, counter foundation, I guess, to the Flawless Fusion that I tried out last year. This released, I want to say, in the end of 2017. And honestly, garbage. Tati really likes this one a lot, but it just was not for me. And I can really only use this one if I mix in a lot of oils. So when they came out with this, which seems to be like kind of a medium to full coverage, but like very, very dewy and very glowy foundation, I was so down. <laughs> but beyond the fact that the packaging is freaking gorgeous, I love this. I definitely think that you do need to apply this one with a sponge. Same with the Hourglass Foundation, actually. You definitely do need to apply with a sponge. I feel like with a brush, it was just too full coverage, if that makes sense, and it was just a lot. But with the Laura Mercier one, I feel like this one just goes streaky with a brush, probably because it is such a glowy foundation. I love this one. I feel like it's a very, very nice long-wearing luminous foundation, so a problem I have with a lot of more dewy kind of like glowy, my skin is slightly oily foundations, is that it looks kind of like, oh, I'm so dewy, I'm so beautiful, I'm like a goddess. And then at the end of the day, you look like you put your face in a bowl of olive oil. But this one, I felt like it looked slightly nice and healthy and dewy in the beginning of the day. And then towards the end of the day, it looked like very, very radiant, but not to a point where it looks greasy. As for foundation, I did not really love this month. Um, mm. This month I tried out Pure Stick Foundation and I was, a little bit scared. Stick foundations do tend to be a little bit more drying on me. 
The hourglass one I really like on my cheeks, but it looks nasty on my forehead. It is definitely, definitely meant for oilier skin types and that just wasn't me. So even though I did try and like load up on the nice hydrating stuff, I tried out, I actually tried to use it with the primer that they recommended. So the Pure 4-in-1 Correcting Hydrating Primer. I tried to use this one with it and just, it was slippy. It was so dry that when I was applying it, it kind of skipped on my face and that was troubling. Pure did send this one to me via Octoly, but unfortunately I wasn't a huge fan. Thankfully though, Pure has always been very like nice about me not liking their products. So even though I have roasted a few of their things like the Shake and Bake Concealer, they still are like nice to me, so that's cool. All right, so I've been working on this one video for a couple months now, um, but basically I bought a ton of things from Drunk Elephant and I'm planning on doing a full brand review of almost everything from their brand. I'm gonna like insert a video right now so you can see my skincare wall right now, but it's basically almost all Drunk Elephant. Stop it, get some help. But something I've been trying out lately has been their newest release, which is the A. Passoni Retinol Cream. This is supposed to really help with skin texture. So obviously I've been struggling a lot with like my acne and just clearing that up. And, and, I'm, and I'm at a point right now where most of the stuff I have on my skin isn't necessarily like active zits. It's just like residual like texture and like bumps. So retinoids are both for like anti-aging, but also helping out with texture. So this is supposed to smooth over your skin. So I was incorporating this in as a moisturizer or like a second moisturizer. So I'll put on like a regular like light gel moisturizer and then put this one on anywhere I want to kind of smooth everything out. I haven't really been noticing any results with this one. So I've been using this for about a month and I haven't really seen anything super noticeable and when it does clear up my texture it's kind of back within a couple days so i will continue to use this one and just see if i see any more consistent results i wouldn't say this has like adversely done anything bad to my skin but it hasn't like done anything super good and my skin's kind of nasty all right so i was recently sent this palette from alter ego this is an indie brand and the palette is called temptress i've been pretty vocal about the fact that i did not like the sultry palette from anastasia and it wasn't just the fact that I didn't love the color scheme, it was also the fact that I just didn't like the formula. I tried out my friend's Sultry palette, and but I felt like the mattes were just kind of like muddy when I tried to blend them out. They are cool tones, but most of the time I can work with cool tone mattes to get them to not look like dirt on my eyes, and the, the Sultry palette just was not my favorite. So I was a little bit wary when they wanted to send me this one just because I wasn't sure I was going to love it. It's actually what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. I will say, the mattes in here are so stunning like very very similar to the anastasia formula but a little bit less powdery so if you don't like a super super soft um really powdery formula in your mattes you will probably like these a lot because they are that same level of like really really high pigmentation but less um like fluffiness if that makes sense shimmers are beautiful as well however they do not show up very well with a brush so i would say these are definitely finger shimmers you're definitely going to want to like pack them on with your finger rather than with a brush what i did for this eye look was i used a wet brush for the shade sterling and Ritz. I layered those on for my shimmer shade and then I took my finger and patted it on top of it and that's how I got this very bright glittery look but it's going to be really hard to do that if you're just using a brush. Overall, I think it's a pretty good palette. I'm going to keep this one around. I'm very impressed with the matte shades in here. I don't hate cool tone palettes. I think a lot of people when I was like talking about not liking the sultry palette thought that was just like because I hate cool tones but I don't. I don't. I just like want them to be well done and I think this is very well done. I've never done this in a new makeup releases, favorites, and fails video, but I do want to do a kind of like backpedal and revisit a product that I reviewed a couple months ago, but now I've been like loving a lot more than I thought I would. So I just wanted to mention these again, but these are the AOA Studio Hush Cream Blushes. They're a relatively new release. And when I first tried these ones out, I liked them, but I didn't really think that they were that special. I wasn't a huge cream blush person, but they have a ton of different shades. If you're wanting like a nice, just basic pink shade, Cozy is one of my favorites. It's this kind of just light, rosy pink shade. If you're wanting a bit more of like a bolder, like reddish shade that still blends out really well, I've used, I think, Shy in a recent Get Ready With Me and then uh, Charm is a bright red as well. These are beautiful. Demir is actually a really good like cream bronzer. It has a slight rosy tone in there, so it kind of like warms up everything and gives it a nice like natural flush to your cheeks. And then probably my favorite is the shade Merlot. It's this deep kind of like pinky aubergine. Plum tones and some purples. Wine color. I think I really want to do a video just talking about my favorite cream cheek products because I've been so obsessed with cream cheek products lately. Like cream contour, I've always been a cream contour person over powders, but I've really been loving cream bronzers lately and cream blushes and also some cream highlights as well, which I never thought I would say. So let me know if you'd like to see that video because I really want to do that. But I've been loving these and they're a dollar each. So even though the packaging is not my favorite, it feels a little bit cheap. One of my favorite things from the AOA Studio line. So I would definitely recommend these ones. They are my favorite, probably my favorite cream blush formula right now. 
actually bought these in the middle of January, but I forgot to include them in the January episode. So I wanted to talk about this lip set that I recently bought from Pat McGrath. So they came out with a bunch of mini lip sets and I decided to buy the nudes one. So it comes with three mini lipsticks for $25, which is a really good deal. I think the full size lipsticks retail for $36 and they're only slightly bigger. The nude set has Flesh 3, 1995, and then Omi. I actually gave away the Omi one because I have the full size of Omi. I think it's a really great way to try out Pat McGrath's formula. It's a really very, very matte bullet formula, but it glides on super easy. It's one of those like non-skippy matte formulas, which I really enjoy in a cream lipstick. And I'm actually wearing the shade Flesh 3 right now. It's kind of like a burgundy, deepish reddish tone it's going to be a beautiful nude on someone with a darker skin tone but on me it's a really cool like burgundy rusty red and i love that also 1995 is like low-key one of my favorite lip colors right now i just i like nude lipsticks that all look the same all right final thing i want to mention is probably the most disappointing thing i tried this month <laughs> i'm sorry pierre i really am i really like a lot of your products but these bitch disgusting but I tried out some liquid liners from them because they came out with this like holiday set and I was super excited because I like doing very like detail because I really like doing detail looks on Instagram so if you follow me you probably saw the flower one that I did and I like having very like precise tight liquid liners to do that with a good amount of pigmentation to them and then it turns out that the white liner is not only sheer but it's also shimmery white I just wanted a nice white liner. Is that too much to ask for? Also, the green is shimmery as well. And then even the matte ones, black matte, it's not that hard to do a black liquid liner. NYX does really, really good ones. This was very patchy. It lacked pigmentation. It kind of went streaky on the eyes. And I do a winged liner every day. My favorite liner is probably the NYX Epic Ink Liner and the Fenty one. That's a really good liner. This. Shit. All right, guys, that is it for all the stuff I tried in February. I wanted to do a thing at the end of my new makeup releases, favorites, and fails videos where I talk about my favorite look of the month and also my favorite video of the month. Favorite look from this month was definitely the flower look. That was so fun to create. It took a long time, but it was so worth it. I loved the finished product and I felt so sad washing it down the sink at the end of the day. And then favorite video of the month was my Sugar Daddy's Pete Roll. If you know, you know. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed down below and also follow me on Instagram to see makeup looks like this one posted fairly regularly. And if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you so, 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 so much. Thank you guys so much for 12,000 subscribers. Um, I'm actually planning on doing a very big giveaway at 15K, so stay tuned for that. But um, if you made it to the very end of this video, I love you. You get the bonus moon. Bye. the bags under my eyes are Prada. <laughs> Kill your family.